artist, that is, belonging to 12-year-old Billy Gilman. We'll talk with music's newest superstar next on Rhode Island Magazine. has been knocking the knickers off country music fans in Rhode Island for quite a while now. But in the last year, the rest of the nation has hopped on the Billy bandwagon. Hi, I'm Joan Edwardson. Welcome to Rhode Island Magazine. We're coming to you from Perks and Quirks, an eclectic cafe on 48 High Street in Westerly, right across from Wilcox Park. Westerly is now kind of known as Gilman Country. Talking, of course, about country music sensation Billy Gilman, who is single-handedly rewriting the music charts. Let's go over some of his record at this point. We're going to meet him in just a moment. He's the youngest solo artist ever to receive a platinum debut record and the youngest ever to receive a Grammy nomination, too, as a matter of fact. He's got an American Music Award sitting on his mantle at home. Billy's albums and singles are not only huge country smashes, but they are crossing over to become pop hits as well. We're going to meet Billy Gilman in just a minute, but first, let's take a look at his brand new video, his latest. It's called Oklahoma. See what you think. Cox Communications. Here is Billy Gilman. from Rhode Island winning the American Music Award for Best New Artist just this past January. How exciting that must have been. I'm Joan Edwardson. Welcome back to Rhode Island Magazine. We're coming to you from Quirks and Perks in Westerly. And we first caught up with Billy Gilman here on Rhode Island Magazine in the summer of 1999 with WCTK disc jockey Tad Lemire. Let's take a look. And Billy Gilman, we'll be looking for you to make it big. Will you come back when you're I a huge will. star? I will. You won't forget about us? No way. All right. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> well, well, he is a big star, although he's saying, look at my hair! <laughs> From 1999. It looked fine then, Billy, oh, and it looks fine you. now as well. Thanks for not forgetting you're about us. Up now. <laughs> so, um, what's new? Has anything happened since 1999? Uh, anything in particular going on? No, it's just been a whirlwind since then. Um, <laughs> How's it feel to be such an accomplished star as a seventh grader? It's just been a whirlwind, and I wish I had like the clock of time so I could like go back and do some stuff because it, it happens so fast and get to enjoy it. But uh, everything's just been going really fast. I've been doing. I uh, did two albums lately: the Christmas album and One Voice, and. Uh, it's just been really fun. Now, what was going through your head as you accepted that American Music Award? Well, I had this speech thing going, you know. I knew what I was going to say when I got up on the stage, because I didn't know I was going to win it. I literally went fair on the floor, so I got to thank, I got to, I forgot to thank so many people. So I was like, oh no, I have to call them and say thank you. You can't be too hard on yourself, though, because I think that happens even to some of the older winners. <laughs> but really, when, when they called my name, I just wanted to faint on the floor. Did you? You were that surprised? Yes. Never in a million trillion years, Never I think is what you said. And we have some teachers coming up to me. It's nev uh, never in a tr million Billion, billion years, not million, trillion. I'm like, I was nervous. <laughs> Let's not be too picky. What is it like for you to go back to school? Are your friends at school supportive? Oh, they're, they're very supportive. No jealousy at all. My really friends, great. Yeah, my friends are just 
as they were when I met them in the first grade. They're just uh, the same, and we do stuff, and I have a, a four-wheeler I got for Christmas, and so they get to come over the house and ride on my four-wheeler, and we go in the woods because I live in the boonies. I live way out in the woods, and so it's really nice. So it's just the same as it always has been. Do you want to keep living in the boonies, or would you like to move to Nashville <laughs> well, at some point? I always want to move to Nashville. Really? Okay, like, no, you don't have to move to Nashville. But uh, maybe someday, but I'm going to stay in Rhode Island. Tell us about One Voice. Who wrote it? And was it written for you? Yes, two of my producers actually wrote it, Don Cook and David Malloy. I couldn't thank them enough for such a great song. And uh, we had to change the words to fit the, the timing of the song and all that stuff, and finally it became one voice. And uh, I, just did, I just couldn't believe what happened with one voice. It was such a great success, and I couldn't thank all the fans enough for bringing me into their collection of music, you know. Is, is school violence or gun violence something that you worry about? Because the gun is the key part of the right, song. Right, well, of course, it affects everybody, but, uh, you know, it, it might happen, it might not. You just take it step by step, and if it does happen, you have to be cautious. How did you like doing the video? And did any of your friends try to climb on the school bus where they say, hey, put me in, <laughs> put me in the video? Well, uh, one of my cousins, actually, I saw him a couple weeks ago, and he said, why did you bring the Cherry Hill school bus to Nashville? <laughs> and I was like, no, it's a Nashville school bus. But, uh, it was really, really hot that day. My butt was sticking to the seat of the, the bus. It was just so hot. And we went up a hill, and all of a sudden, the bus started to slide. So we were sliding down a hill, and there was tornadoes all around us. And so it was horrible. Wow, really? But it turned out to be the video. <laughs> it's a good video. You would never know watching it. Is that a, is that a fun side of things for you? The yes. making of the music videos. I love the music videos because there's a lot of good free food, you know. And so uh, <laughs> it's just really really fun meeting all the the people that uh, do all the hard work. And uh, so it's really fun making the music video. Who have you enjoyed meeting over the past year? Was because you've been. Britney Spears, uh, President Oh, I'm not going to get that. She yeah. gave me a hug, and I wanted to say on the floor. It was at the American <laughs> Music Awards. Two things great happened in my life that night. <laughs> Which was better? Could you pick? Oh, thanks. No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they have to be equal. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah. Tell us about your trip to the White House. That was a, that was amazing. Is that too loud? No, it's okay. Okay. Talking about that's all right. Yeah. It's a little noisy here on High Street, but we'll put yeah. up with it. <laughs> but meeting the president was awesome. I was like, uh -huh, uh -huh. I was the president. I was like, it was really shocking. And during the performance, when they took my mic away after I sang, they were like, Ugh. I mean, it was a, it was like a puddle. I was so nervous. It was like all sweaty. I was so nervous, but uh, I got to meet them, and I got to go to the Oval Office, and so it was really cool. Did you take any souvenirs? Actually, I didn't, but I got to see a moon rock from the moon, of course. Uh, but, so that was really cool. It was in the office. How about country music stars you've been able to meet now that One Voice has been such a success? Who have you enjoyed meeting? Oh, I've met everyone from Trisha Yearwood to Garth Brooks to Pam Tillis to... I haven't met Travis Tritt yet. That would be really cool. He's in the same record like... I don't want to meet Travis Tripp, but I've met Patty Loveless, i met the Kinleys, i met everyone, and they're just so, so nice. They treat me like they, they've known me for years, and it's just... Are you getting any advice from other people who have been successful at a young age, like perhaps Leanne Rimes, who also, she wasn't quite as young as you are, <laughs> but she also hit it big as a, as a youngster. I will often just keep saying, keep, keep following that dream, because no dream is too extreme, and... You're doing a great job so far, but just keep following that star because hopefully you'll have a great career ahead of you. Well, you've got one already. Oh, thank What's you. What's left to, to wish for? I don't know. I mean, I've just gotten everything that I've always wanted in the past eight months. It's going so fast. And uh, I just couldn't thank, again, all the fans enough. And you, thank you for taking the time. What's happening this summer? Are you going to be hitting the road again? Yes, we're going to be doing a tour with Jessica Andrews. That's going to be so much fun. It's going to go for about three months, and I uh, can't wait. How the braces doing? Good. I got these things on my teeth, and they hurt so bad, and it's hard to talk. And so I'm in a mess. Do you think it's going to affect your singing at all? Hopefully not. I don't keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, I don't think so. I had them. It go, it's unpleasant, but once they're off, the tightening, they say, is bad. 
It's unpleasant. We had the bands put on yesterday. That's no picnic either, no. right? No, because you had to bite on this thing to tighten them up on your tooth. I remember it oh. well. A little hunk of metal. All right, Billy. Well, good luck with everything. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to plug a couple of your upcoming shows because I know people always want to know where you're appearing. All right. Emerald Square Mall, that one's not too far away. No, in April for the St. Jude Telephone. Make your donation. Okay, April 11th. And then this summer, August 10th, Fall River Celebrates America. You've done that festival in the past. Yes, it's, it's been probably this is my fourth time in a row. And also August 18th, the Washington County State Fair. Another good time. Yes, it's going to be a great time. All right, Billy. Coming up next, we are going to meet the woman behind the man, Angela Bacari, Billy's manager. Stay tuned. <laughs> shop cafe I should say 48 high street in Westerly 12 year old Billy Gilman has had more success already than many people have in an entire lifetime and obviously he did it with some excellent guidance and love and here is his manager Angela Bacari welcome to the show thank Angela. you Joe it's nice to be here when did you first feel like Billy was gonna hit it big like he really had what it would take I think the first time I heard him I just got tremendous goosebumps and I fell back on my couch. I, was, I knew then that he had the quality. How long ago was that? How many years have you um, been working with him? Four. Four, four years. years. Yeah. And uh, what has been the most surprising thing to you in the past year, if anything at all? Well, it's just that, it's ha like Billy said, it's happened so fast. I can, I mean, it was a year ago now that he and I were in Nashville just cutting his new CD. Actually, in March we did it. And um, you just don't know what's going to happen. But I knew that Billy had the best. He had the best producers, the best um, record company, the best management team. So all that was left was that we got the right songs and that the world embraced him. That was all that was left because he, I mean, he doesn't even realize what, it, what it's like to struggle from the bottom and go up to the top because he started right with the best. Right. So it was just waiting for the world to embrace him. Now, in addition to being a fantastic talent and having this great voice, he's also a little boy. Oh, yes, he is. What kinds of things do you incorporate into your management? to try to make sure that he's okay as a little person and that he remains grounded. Is that a challenge as yes, well? Yes, it is. Um, I have um, tremendous um, cooperation from his family. That helps. And um, the, the manager that I teamed up with, Scott Simon, who is also Tim McGraw's manager, they're very, very skilled in management. So they work very hard along with me. If I say, I don't think this is good for him, I think we're pushing him, I think he needs a break, no matter what I ask for, they give me. Same thing with Sony Records. They are very, very focused and tuned in on Billy as a child. He's 12 years old, and that was the deal from the beginning. I wanted him to be with people that were going to be, you know, concerned that he is 11, 12 years old, so that he could have a balanced life. It's, and that's what we strive to do for Billy. Now, you have an entertainment background yes, as do. well, don't you? Yeah. You have a long history. Long history. I thought I was off the road. Now I'm back on the road. I, thought, I, was, I was like retiring. I don't get this. <laughs> so now I'm back on the road, and I just... It just comes natural, you throw your stuff in the suitcase and off you go. Is it fun for you, uh, having been there yourself, to yes. bring people to actually additional success? It, it, is, it is a joy because, I, I don't want to say this in a derogatory way, but I don't have the pressure of going out there to perform now. I get back, I sit back and watch all, how hard Billy and I have worked for him to get out there and pull off the performance. But I do sing, I think, every note with him. Do when you? Oh God, when he's out there, I mean, I'm just like this until he gets it and then it's over with and he accomplishes it. Well, was it like for you when he won his American Music Award? What were you thinking? I flipped. I just don't want to act like a fool and cry really hard. You know, I was trying so hard to hold it back, but it was, I mean, he, I, he was so, when they would say the nominees, you know, he's like this. I saw him, I said, just relax, you know, being nominated is, is, is a privilege in itself. Absolutely. You know, you win, you win. But I could just see he was like, when they said his name, he just, I mean, just his excitement just, just caught me, you know, I'm just, oh my God, you know. You have another young star we're about to meet. Oh, Tell yes. us about Nicholas.